Okay, plain as white. I'll just take this off the board. Attack the queen. And attack the queen again. This type of position, if they take in, then we've developed two pieces. Um, and the opponent hasn't developed any pieces if the queen is off the board which they have done so bishop and the knight are developed so they're slow in developing so develop the knight ready for castling brought the knight out so it can push through the center bishops attacking the knight Just developing another piece so we've got all our minor pieces developed they have captured okay they're doing single attacks so maybe that's not going to be to their benefit with capture uh, sorry castle and another single attacker and the knights out so he's not developed his pieces he's just focused on attacking with the piece that's already developed I'm hoping that's going to stand us in good stead usually it's the case of single attacks bathing shallow waters you know what i mean they don't have any sort of like depth to them so he's attacking the pawn again a single attack with the rook What do we have? We can do a simple defense with the pawn or bring the bishop around and attack his bishop, his rook. His, if his rook forgets himself and actually takes the pawn. So we can bring the bishop down now in front of his king area. As you can see, our knight and the bishop and our wise bear bishop, in a sense, are facing towards their king area. Um, developed quite nicely. His rook is in the center of the board now, doesn't really have any place there unless it's to their benefit. So he's got a two on one on our D pawn. So it's easily defended, could push the um, C pawn, could attack his knight at some stage with our knight. Um, what we're gonna do is just gonna leave that pawn because if the knight takes, then we take his knight for free. Because his knight's got no defense on it. It's come out with a single attack and it's not supported by anything. So he could move back, blocking his rook. So then his two on one has gone from the pawn. Our bishop has an x-ray through as well, through to their king on the air h7 as well. So incremental steps to try and develop some pressure. Like I say, I think the best place for it to go is back to this square because anywhere else is getting taken yep it looks like they've gone into the tank on this one so it's actually captured okay so it's captured so we'll capture here uh, no problems with his knight taking because we get to take it back so he's ending up being um, a minor piece down from that exchange they put a lot of thought into that move as well I think the rook's going to look try and come down and be attacking d2 but we do have diagonals in preparation for attacks to swarm them the annoying thing yeah look at that okay so he's attacked so we can go here because if his rook takes the pawn then we get a lack of back rank checkmate so i think he's going to have to take and we still got the threat of the back rank checkmate situation so he's going to have to move a pawn in front of his king okay so we got there through the opponent basically doing single attacks in the shallow waters with no depth of working the pieces together or no focus on actually attacking our king area or the pieces around our king uh, with any support so it is a key thing in terms of single attacks really do not have much weight so 
and it's moved the pawn, moved the pawn in front of the king. Can put the check on. I was thinking of bringing the bishop up to um, f6 before doing that, but I think it would have won him a bit of a tempo, maybe getting his rook out or something. I'm probably wrong. I just wanted to block his um, rook from actually getting into the game. So we could come back and attack the pawn here, making space to actually attack the king even as well if he does move. If the pawn drops, what do we do? We can just bring the bishop back, or there's no attacks on the king. Ooh, okay, so we could go, still go with this. Not too sure what the follow one is though. The pawn drops. Could come round the back and attack. Pawn drops. Bishop just comes back to maybe c3 or something like that, keeping the diagonal. Mm. Or does the rook move first? If we move, if we move the rook to here, then it can drop to here if the pawn drops then we get a check on the king so I think moving the rook first works better because that pawn's going to drop and then there's no there's no more sting on the on the king I have to think long term this is that case of you know the single attacks yeah single attack might do its job for that single moment but what's the follow on and that's what I'm trying to teach myself. What's the follow one? So bringing the rook here now. So if then, I mean, it could push the pawn down now, and it stops my bishop from doing that attack altogether. So that's another quizzical thing. So white square bishop depends what he does. If he drops his pawn to c6, uh, f6. Oh, he's given up. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Um, I don't think it was a clear win or anything. Well, I suppose in a way they would have had to work very hard. These single attacks that came through with the queen, then with the bishop, and then with the knight. As you can see, the development in the process is really slow for the opponent. So there's nothing dynamic at the minute. Showing we're okay-ish on the eval bar, and then capturing here. So now we're out and out winning, but it's you have to find that position <laughs>